Hello again. A few years ago, I had a book published on the subject of British concentration camps. I give a link to it in the description to this video, and you can see it in the thumbnail. By concentration camps, of course, I do not mean death camps like Treblinka in Poland. I rather mean places where civilians are detained indefinitely without trial, not for what they have done, but for who they are. That is to say, they are imprisoned because of their nationality, religion, political beliefs, and so on. In Nazi Germany, Jews and communists were held in this way in camps. In Poland, before the Second World War, Ukrainians were detained at Beretsa Katushka concentration camp. And in this country, at various times, people have been held in camps because they were German citizens or Irish Republicans. None of these people had done anything. They were held because of who they were. Now, I am very far from being a fan of concentration camps. I've made no secret at all of my association with Israel, and that alone probably enables folks to guess how I feel about the whole business of locking people up because of their ethnicity. I find the concept abhorrent. A while ago, I made a video which I published here in which I pointed out that it was, if it was really desired to remove all asylum seekers and refugees from this country, then it would be necessary to set up an extensive network of camps to detain them all pending deportation. I did this chiefly to show people the logical conclusion of a certain line of thought to exhibit the implications which some of those who advocate stern measures to tackle illegal immigration had not perhaps considered. I spoke too about the suspension of democracy which would be necessary for such a programme to be carried out. It could of course be done, as it was during the First World War. At that time a network of concentration camps were set up and those of German or Austrian nationality were locked up in them. Conditions were pretty grim. People were killed in them, not in a systematic way, but more on a haphazard basis. <clears throat> At the Alexandra Palace concentration camp, for instance, and that is what it was called. There was a sign bearing this title at the entrance gate. The daily calorie intake for prisoners was 1,489 calories. The average man needs two and a half thousand calories a day to maintain health. The food there often consisted of soup, and this was served in the same buckets which we used to mop the floors, which made many men unable to stomach it. The aim of the exercise was to ensure that as many Germans left the country when the war was over as could be encouraged to do so. It was a form of ethnic cleansing, and it could form the pattern for those who favour extreme measures to alter the population today. In 1911, there were 8,869 people living in London who had been born in Austria. By the time of the 1921 census, this figure had been reduced to 1,552. In short, 80% of the Austrians had left or been removed from the country. Let me be perfectly clear about this. I am not advocating, and nor do I wish to see, such measures. I am pointing out, as I have done so before, that such things are possible and have been done in this country. I am not personally in favour of such a move. I was going to say in favour of such a final resolution. But of course, the last time I made such a play on words, it was seized upon by some as a coded call for the extermination of foreigners. There was a time when irony was the mainstay of English humour, but alas, these days, every word is taken literally all too often. Let me sum up what I have been saying for those who are all too prone to willfully misunderstand what I say in these videos. In the past, this country has used methods to remove foreign-born people from the country by means of a network of concentration camps and forced deportations. That is what happened between 1914 and 1920 with those born in Germany and Austria and living in Britain. There would be no problem 
about such an action today. I don't think it would be a good idea, though, because all else apart, it would mean the end of any pretense at democracy in this country. I set out the prospect, both here and in a previous video, not as a good or desirable blueprint for future action, but rather to show people the logical, indeed inevitable consequences of some of the more intemperate demands for controls on illegal immigration. Those who want such things should be very sure that they understand what would be entailed. For my own part, I feel that the remedy would be worse than the disease. This is, by the way, a common English idiom for a solution which is worse than the original problem. It does not, of course, mean that I am referring to illegal immigrants as a disease. I say this because some fool interpreted this common expression in just that way in the previous video which I made and actually complained to YouTube that I have been saying that foreigners were a disease. I know it sounds almost incredible. That's why I find it necessary now to try and um, spot what moves these fools will be taking in the future.